What's good, y'all? It's your guy, Bendu. And uh, today, I wanted to touch on this topic real quickly because I feel like topics like this is very annoying to cover. Um, because, honestly, I don't give a fuck about The View. I really don't care. I think they're all corporatist hacks. Um, I think Meghan McCain is a demon spawn, like Liz Cheney, which is why she loves Liz Cheney so much. But, um, yeah, so I just want to talk about this Van Jones situation because I found it very interesting. Now, you know, Van Jones is a corporate hack as well. But the fact that he gets he got attacked by, like, Sonny Hostin for working with Donald Trump to get people out of jail is astounding to me. So here, check the video out. Now, now, Van, you do spend a lot of time, uh, you know, threading the middle and trying to, to unite people. But uh, there are those who really accuse you of being a political opportunist, a chameleon, so to speak, who provided a racial cover for a former disgraced, twice impeached President Trump. You said this, and I quote, Donald Trump, and I get beat up by liberals every time I say this, but I'm going to keep saying it. He has done good stuff for the black community, opportunity zone stuff, black college stuff. There's a side to Donald Trump that I think he does not get enough credit for. Yet, just recently, you cried uh, on CNN when Joe Biden was elected the 46th president, um, and you said, it's easier to be a parent now. Character matters now. Truth matters. You even mentioned George Floyd and said a lot of people felt they couldn't breathe. People in the black community don't trust you anymore. What, what is your response? Uh, well, I, 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 don't, I don't think that, that that's true. If you, The entire quote I said was that, that Trump has done a lot of good stuff he doesn't get credit for. And then I went on to say the reason I didn't get credit for it is because he's done all this horrific stuff, said all this horrific stuff, and it completely erases what he's done. But what happens is social media will take the clip, but they won't show the full context. And so what, what I will say is this. My entire life has been about bringing people together to solve tough problems for people at the very bottom who don't have anything. I've spent 25 years fighting against the prison system. Uh, I have helped to close five abusive prisons. And by working with Republicans at the local, state, and federal level, and yes, including the Trump administration, I have helped to pass 18 bipartisan bills. We got 14,000 people out of the federal prison system with the First Step Act and more to come. We got 70,000 human beings who were suffering in jails and prisons under COVID, released under compassionate release, working with Republicans and Democrats. Uh, you, you, if, you know, Black Lives Matter, math matters too. 80% of black folks are locked up in states that are run in part or whole by Republicans, red states and, and, and purple states. So when you can pass a law, as my team has done, in a Louisiana, uh, in a Georgia, in California, Michigan, red states, blue states, and purple states, to get people home, the people behind bars are not sitting up here worried, saying, get me out of prison, Dan, or whatever you do, don't talk to a Republican. They say, get me out of prison. And I am proud of the fact that my team at the Reform Alliance, Dream Corps, and Cut 50 have been able to work with anybody to get folks home. At a certain point, we got to stop focusing on rhetoric and look at results. People may, may not like everything I have said on television, but I try to be balanced. But look at what I have done. Who among my critics have been able to get people together to help folks at the bottom? When we fight like this about everything, and you can't give anybody even a little bit of credit for anything, who hurts? It's not the politicians. It's not the pundits. It's regular folks who don't have anything, people who can't vote because they're in jail. We have to put their interests first. I'm never going to apologize for putting the interests of people at the bottom first. People need champions. Whoever's in that White House, I've got a responsibility to go in there and advocate and try to get people home out of prison. I'm going to keep doing it, whoever's in that White House. So Van Jones works with Trump to get people out of fucking jail, an objectively good thing, and get shitted on for it, while Nancy Pelosi refused to work with Trump, as she says here. All right, so your relationship with President Trump is an interesting one. You serve as a foil for him in a lot of ways. You've never been shy to speak your mind uh, with him, like, ripping up the speech, his speech at the State of the Union. Mm -hmm. You're Speaker of the House, though, and you haven't spoken to him in almost a year. Do you get a sense that that's, uh, that you should be speaking to him, given you are the most powerful Democrat uh, at this moment? I speak to him every day uh -huh. in the public domain. In the public domain. That's what how about he hears things. Right. Is, is that's how he hears things. And um, again, I want to have a witness to what mm -hmm. I have to say to him. 
Right. What about privately? You have not spoken with him. What's the use? And let millions of Americans suffer through this economic depression unnecessarily. Then goes full Donald Trump on journalists when she's confronted on her fuckery. This is this is ridiculous, man. This is ridiculous. Like, I'm thinking of it through the lens of, look, Van Jones, Van Jones, he, he works for CNN, okay? He, he, he is a political, she described him as a political opportunist. He works for CNN. Everybody that works for CNN is a political opportunist. You have fucking Jake Tapper who sits there and fucking um, talks about, we can't afford Medicare for all and basically lies about lies about it on a daily fucking basis. You got fucking uh, Chris Cuomo on there coming at Ice Cube for working with Trump as well because Joe Biden won't even see him. Because basically what Joe Biden did, did to Ice Cube was like, look, nigga, look. Come see me after the election. Vote for me. Come see me after the election, and maybe I'll talk to you. Donald Trump, political opportunist as well, I was like, oh, come on down, Ice Cube, because he wanted black votes. Let's be real. That's why Trump saw him. But you got to get in the room with whoever's going to see you because Donald Trump had a likelihood of be, um, still being in a power structure, and Ice Cube would have had to see him. So nobody brought up the fact that Joe Biden, that Joe Biden, like, decided not to see Ice Cube until after the election, but... You got Chris Cuomo on CNN coming at him. Then you have fucking, um, what is his name? The black guy. You get some Don Lemon's bitch ass sitting there talking about, oh, Ice Cube was one of these black guys that's trying to turn people Trump. Shut your fucking partisan ass up. So anybody on fucking CNN is a partisan hack. I be trying to tell people this shit. So I find it weird that, you know, she calls him specifically out for being a partisan hack. Or for, for being a political, my, I'm, I'm sorry, political opportunist uh, for working with Trump on something objectively good. One of the few things that was good about Trump. And also, I find it weird. Where was this energy for Brian Williams when he was nutting his pants over Trump bombing Syria? Go into greater detail. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Um, and they are beautiful pictures of, uh, of fearsome armaments making what is for them a brief flight over to this airfield. Yeah, that's kind of like, I mean, that, that may not be political opportunism, but what I'm saying is like he was applauding Trump for bombing another country for 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 um for some bullshit because that gas attack has been debunked something that didn't happen so where's your energy for him and 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 you guys like literally so so like my thing is you're getting mad at him for working with um donald trump on something good but you guys like like fuck with you know a reformed bona fide war criminal like george bush you know john bolton um, and many others because, say it with me, folks, da, 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 Trump bad. Like, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, people literally tolerated John Bolton. This is a guy who put who has the world on standby every time he's in some form of public office because he's such a fucking warmonger. Like, it's ridiculous. And as soon as he flips on Trump, you know, y'all pull him in, uh, this and that, and take him under your wing. There was only, I forgot who it was. It was only, like, one person that challenged him about his war record. Only one. So I just find that insane. And then, like, you know, y'all talk about, oh, George Bush, is, George Bush, Bill Clinton, they're the Avengers and shit. Like, the view themselves didn't do it. But this is a criticism of the overall media. You all are political opportunists. You all are stenographers of the government um, in order to keep your paychecks. Sonny Hostin. Like, and sometimes Sonny has good points. But overall, she usually says the corporate talking points and everything. So it's ridiculous. And just in like, it's, it, it's, it's like, I don't know, man. I just find it like insane that Megan McCain, you know, and also her talking about in the quick sidebar, her talk, you know, she's describing the Republican Party as the party of like uh, Liz Cheney and um, not, not, you know, um, the, the, uh, what the, what the hell is her name? Marjorie Taylor Greene. You know, describing the Republican Party as a uh, party of Liz Cheney and like the Nikki Haley types and shit. Yo, Nick, Liz Cheney is the is a demon spawn, just like you, Megan McCain. She's a her dad's a piece of shit. Literally, she worked with Donald. She or she she refused to work with Donald Trump 
and the Democrats decided to work with Liz Cheney on stopping Donald Trump from ending war. I will say that again. Liz Cheney, the House Democrats worked with Liz Cheney to stop Donald Trump from ending war. Donald Trump wanted to end the Afghanistan war, and Liz Cheney said, fuck no, I want to work with Democrats to stop you from doing that shit. No outrage. No outrage from Sonny. No calling um, um, House Democrats, you know, political opportunists and shit like that. Because when you're doing fucked up shit on behalf of the corporate state, on behalf of the military industrial complex, that's okay. You literally had Joy Behar sit in that studio and tell Americans to their faces to get over the Iraq war. You've questioned her judgment. Now, we all know the Iraq war was a big mistake. Yeah. Everybody agrees with you. But yes. a lot of people made that mistake, and you keep harping on that. Maybe you should let that go already. Get over it and go vote for Hillary. Fuck out of here, dog. All Get all the way the fuck out of here. And look, this isn't me defending Van Jones. Fuck Van Jones. This is the same bitch-ass nigga that sat on TV and fucking, um, and fucking cried about um, da, da, um, Trump losing and shit. Like, fuck out of here. That was some bitch-ass shit. That was the most, one of some of the most bitch-ass shit i ever seen on fucking television on, on, on a news show. But... The fact that, look, he's actually doing something good here is ridiculous. I even watched Charlemagne. He was on a, um, him and Schultz's podcast and everything. He was talking about it. And it's like, yo, black, and this is the problem with black people. We keep listening to dumbass niggas like Charlemagne. And every now and then, Charlemagne will have a good take, but not this time. Absolutely not this time. Because it's like, he kind of agreed with them. Like, you can't work with, Trump. like, nah, bro, work, you work with people that will work with you. Like, this is the same thing that Bernie did. I think Bernie worked with Ron Paul to um, fucking stop the Yemen war. Bernie also worked with, people don't talk about this a lot. So there was this, um, he was like, I think he was a mayor in Texas that implemented aspects of the Green New Deal, like bringing solar panels and wind turbines, all this shit down to this, you know, this small town in Texas. And Bernie, him and Bernie got together and basically like Bernie used this, used this guy's, the success of this guy's implementing of, you know, Green New Deal tight policies and how it improved his town and him and Bernie got together and talked about it and you know touted it as this great thing I mean even though it didn't go successfully I didn't 100% agree with it Bernie got with Josh Hawley to advocate for checks you know for um stem checks and you know there's multiple um things that happen you know good from you know a lefty teaming up with a righty and I think this is kind of like Going down the, the the area of like Jimmy Dore and the Boogaloo Boys as well, you know the um Magnus um Panjavito. I hope I'm saying his name right. Like one, that situation is fucked because like literally you have people attributing shit to Magnus that he like literally debunked every literally every time. Like so, look, I know the first when he went on Jimmy's show because like I will say Jimmy has a tendency to not push people in a certain you know to push people and shit like that that he likes, which I get and I understand, like. I get people's criticism of that, but when the guy literally, but in the first time I was kind of like, all right, Jimmy didn't push him. This is da, 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 blah, blah, blah. But then he went on Nico house. Then he went on the convo couch. He went on all these fucking different shows. And like, literally he's saying the same shit. And then people keep attributing shit to him that he keeps saying he's not. <laughs> so it's, it's like, what the fuck? You guys are literally doing the same thing you accused the mainstream media of doing to Bernie Sanders. But now you're doing it to this guy because you can throw the label on him being like this white supremacist and shit like that. And it's kind of similar to Van Jones. Like, you get to throw on this label of him being a coon or whatever. Or, you know, kind of like, so I, in my opinion, I feel like Sonny was using the word political opportunist in a um instead of using the word coon because I, I i'm not saying she would call him a coon but that's what a lot of black people would call um somebody working with trump to get something done and i think that's fucking retarded I'm, i think that's so dumb like what the fuck if he's getting people out of jail why does it matter same thing with kim k when kim k was going to the over office and shit like that who the fuck cares that it's kim kardashian getting people out of jail she's getting people out of jail who the fuck cares if Donald Trump is willing to work with somebody, I don't give a fuck. Same thing with the stimulus checks. Like Nancy Pelosi, as I played, or, um, or not, I didn't play it. That was from another clip in that Sway podcast. But that same, that same podcast, y'all not played it on here before. It's like, oh, Trump wants his name on that check, and that ain't going to happen. And it's like, who cares as long as people get the help? 
Who cares? Oh, Nancy cares because it gets in the way of Joe Biden becoming president because Joe Biden's offering nobody nothing and Donald Trump is offering them $2,000 and they know that the people will vote for the $2,000. So that's why she put a hold on policies. But they don't ever say that. That's never talked about because you don't cross the party in that way. You can cross the party on dumb shit, you know, dumb identity politics, culture war bullshit, but you can't cross the party on actual real things. And that that is the fucking problem with the mainstream media. They're stenographers of of the elites. They're stenographers of whoever's putting money in their pockets, and that is the problem. So, um yeah, so I want to go ahead and close the video out there. Definitely again, definitely not defending Van Jones. Van Jones is a, is a corporate hack reporter piece of shit too but the fact that he actually got people out of jail and you know reform policy under you know i think and i'm pretty sure i don't know if he, i don't think he worked with trump directly but he worked with like jared kushner and shit like that whatever but the fact that he's getting criticized for getting people out of jail is fucking ridiculous so um i will go ahead and close the video there thank you guys for tuning in definitely yo go peep that direct democracy talk talks talk yo i had a great time talking to sharif i had a great time talking to shelly yo they really put a lot of ideas in my head that we can use for that direct democracy stuff yo i'm a um uh, i have another video coming out that i'm going to be posting i'm gonna post some links to some of the readings of mike Ravel that i've been doing and things like that i'd also recommend buying his book um because it's dope but um yeah so definitely go go peep that y'all because i really thought we talked uh, that was a great conversation y'all. i enjoyed that conversation so much um i'm gonna be having uh some more guests on soon and again i know i've been teasing y'all with these announcements and shit but i'm still planning it so i kind of i'm a very particular person i'm like kanye when it comes to producing this shit you know I know y'all be hating on Kanye. Kanye's still that bulldog when it comes to music. But I want to make sure it's right before I tell y'all what it's going to be. So just stay tuned for that. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.